Hello sports fans, welcome to Super Sports Central. Today, we're going to be ranking every MLB left fielder that will be starting in the 2022 MLB season. So, I've done catchers, first, second, and third baseman, as well as shortstops. So now we're on to left fielders. And this will be done in tier list format, as I have done the others. So starting off at the top, we have the elite category for the elite left fielders. Then above average, then good, below average, and bad. Starting off, we have Randy Arozarena of the Tampa Bay Rays. He's a great player, um, above average, borderline elite, but above average for sure, so I'm going to put him in above average. Next up, we have Austin Hayes. He's a good fielder with a solid bat. I'm going to give him a good. By the way, he plays for the Orioles. Next up, we have Akil Badu of the Tigers. Um, good. Maybe above average. Um, I'm going to give him good, but he does have a lot of potential. Next up, we have Ben Gamel. Um, he's a decent player, borderline above average. Uh, sorry, borderline below average, but I'm going to give him a good. He just hasn't really been that, well, good recently. Like, nothing amazing. So, I, I do have him good, but he's just in the good category. Next up, we have Andrew Benintendi. He's just a good, solid left fielder. Next up, we have Brad Miller of the Rangers. He's a good utility player. I'm going to give him a good. Next up, we have Michael Brantley of the Astros. He's an above-average left fielder. Um, He's a consistent hitter. I'm going to give him above average. Next up, we have Nick Castellanos of the Phillies. He signed there in the offseason after not re-signing with the Reds. He doesn't have the best glove in the in the outfield. However, he does have a good bat, so I'm going to give him above average. But as I mentioned, the the fielding part of his game could definitely use improvement. Next up, we have Chris Taylor. So I actually ranked him when I did second baseman, but then the Dodgers made a trade, so now he's playing left field for them. Um, But I'm going to be ranking him as a left fielder. Still above average, which is what I gave him. I think that's what I gave him when I ranked him as a second baseman. Because he's just so good wherever you do, wherever you put him. He's a good utility man to have. I think really any team would want him. He could play just about anywhere. Next up, we have Eddie Rosario of the Braves. He had a great postseason last season, and I'm going to give him an above average. Next up, we have Iwa Jimenez of the White Sox. So, in he had a shortened season last year due to an injury, which um, delayed the start of his season. But I'm going to give him above average. Next up, we have Joey Gallo, another player I'm going to give above average. He strikes out too much, um, and so he's not a, he, he's home run walker strikeout uh, most of the time he's at bat. So, and I'm gonna, he's a good fielder as well. I'm going to give him above average. Next up, we have Lotus Gurriel Jr. of the Blue Jays. He's good. He has improved. He could make the jump to above average, but right now I'm giving him good. Next up, we have Ian Happ, another good that I think could make the jump to above average. Next up, we have Jesse Winker of the Mariners. Came over in a trade a few weeks ago. He's elite, so he isn't the most outstanding outfielder. But of all these left fielders, I think he's probably one of the best, if not the best left fielder. So Jesse Winker gets our first elite. Next up, we have Alex Krilorov. I hope, Hopefully I said his name, name right. Still young, only 24 years old. I'm going to give him a good. Next up, we have Chris Bryant of the Rockies. So he could also play third base. Um, but he'll be playing left field for them. I'm going to give him above average. I think he's probably an elite third baseman. But left field, he's definitely above average. Next up, we have Lane Thomas of the Nationals. I'm going to give him below average. He was a high prospect a few years ago. Hasn't lived up to that. Uh, below average. Next up, we have Mark Canna now playing for the Mets. Um, good to above average. He's a good player. I'm gonna give him above average. Next up, we have Brandon Marsh of the Angels. He hasn't been in the league for very long. Um, I'm going to give him a good. Next up, we have Tyra O'Neill. I'm gonna give him an elite. Um, he had an amazing season last year. He gets an elite. He's arguably the best left fielder in the game. Next up, we have David Peralta of the Diamondbacks. He's gotten older, however, he's still good. 
Next up, we have Steven Piscotti of the A's. Um, he has not been very good lately, so he's going to get a below average. Next up, we have Jurassic Profar. Um, he's a utility man that could play quite a few positions. I'm going to give him a good. Next up, we have Ahmed Rosario. Another good here. Um, he could also play shortstop, but as a left fielder, I'm going to give him a good. Next up, we have World Series MVP Jorge Soler. He's an above average. Next up is Tommy Pham. He's gotten older, however, he, I still think he's a good player. Alex Verdugo is next on our list. He plays for the Boston Red Sox. I'm going to give him a... Uh, he's he, between an above average and good. I'm going to give good. And second to last, we have Lamont Wade Jr. of the Giants. I'm going to give him good. And last, we have Christian Yelich. So now, I think he could be an elite player. However, he has not been playing at an elite level the past few years. Or definitely last year. So I'm going to give him above average. However, I, I think he could be elite. Um, but I think right now he's above average for me. So those are my rankings for of all the left fielders before the 2022 MLB season starts. So like, subscribe, and comment if you agree with this, disagree, and why. Let me know who you agree with, who you disagree with. Like, subscribe, comment. And I do my best to post as often as possible, and I will see you in the next video.